Oh, what is this? For your eyes only. Let's see. This video was created by a type 1 diabetic mainly as a laugh for fellow type 1 diabetics to joke about the general comments and questions we get time after time when people hear that we have type 1 diabetes. Sometimes it's frustrating to hear the comments coming from people who either don't care or don't know any better. So I decided to turn the frustration into education. The information was gathered from a worldwide type 1 diabetes community combined with roughly what, 7,134 days of personal experience living as a type 1. The comments are real, the answers were thoroughly researched and is included for informative purposes. It's honest, it's over-exaggerated and it's vigorous. If you're easily, mm, yeah, if you're easily offended, skip. If you can't face the facts of the disease, skip. But, oh, I like this part. But if you're ready to become part of the change in how the world responds to type 1 diabetes, grab a carb-free, guilt-free, sugar-free, taste-free snack, sit back and relax. Although diabetes is a serious condition, please accept the video in a light-hearted manner. It is not done by a professional actor and it's not a joke about any illness. It's also not medical advice and when in doubt, remember to always seek the help of a medical professional. Although it took hours to create, no diabetes were harmed in the making of this video. Enjoy! No way, you do not look diabetic. You don't even look sick. Oh, thanks, that is so kind. But type 1 diabetes is an invisible illness. I have a piece here. Um, type 1 diabetes is an invisible illness except to the person who has it. It does not pick on age, gender or race and comes in all shapes and sizes. It does not have a certain look or feel and it looks like me or any other person. Sorry, but I have no idea what type 1 diabetes is. They say if you can't explain something to a five-year-old, you don't fully understand the concept yourself. So let's take it from the top. I have it right here. Diabetes is a disease that affects how the body uses glucose, a sugar that is the body's main source of fuel. Your body needs glucose to keep running. Here's how it should work. You eat, glucose from the food gets into your bloodstream, your pancreas makes a hormone called insulin. So why do you need insul um, insul in insulin? That's on a different page. Let's see, here we go. Insulin helps the glucose get into the body cells. Stay with me, your body gets the energy it needs. The pancreas is a long flat gland in your belly that helps your body digest food. It also makes insulin. Insulin is kind of like a key that opens the door to the cells of the body. It lets the glucose in. Then the glucose can move out of the blood and into the cells. But if someone has diabetes, the body either can't make insulin or the insulin doesn't work in the body like it should. The glucose can't get into the cells normally, so the blood sugar level gets too high. Lots of sugar in the blood makes people sick if they don't get treatment. In type 1 diabetes, the pancreas can't make insulin. The body can still get glucose from food, but the glucose can't get into the cells where it's needed. Glucose stays in the blood, which makes the blood sugar very high and causes health problems. To fix the problem, someone with type 1 diabetes needs to take insulin through regular shots or an insulin pump. With type 2 diabetes, it's different from type 1. In type 2, the pancreas still makes insulin, but the insulin doesn't work in the body like it should and blood sugar levels get too high. So you're telling me there are different types of this disease, right? The most familiar types are type 1 and type 2, but there are two completely different diseases. Be sure to educate yourself about the other types of diabetes if you would like to know more. Stop right there. Do you have the good kind or the bad kind? I actually made a note about this. Good and bad are not types of diabetes. I have type 1 diabetes and that is a type where I need to watch my diet, test my blood sugar, inject myself with insulin or make use of an insulin pump, drink enough water, get enough sleep and always carry supplies with me. I also need to participate in exercise, not too little and not too much though. I must calculate everything that goes into my mouth in correlation with the amount of insulin I need and I need to keep up with medical appointments and tests. I must try not to stress unnecessarily and I need to monitor and manage myself 24-7, yes, even when I sleep. I have the type where the medication that I need to save my life can also kill me. 
the type I have cannot be silenced. I carry it inside and outside of my body and I'm aware of it every second of every day. But what do you think? Is it the good or the bad kind? There is no good type of diabetes. All types of diabetes are bad. Aren't you too young to be diabetic? But aren't you too old to have type 1 diabetes? Wait a minute, I have a fact on that. Here we go. Diabetes is a mysterious disease. It can appear at any given age and time. Although type 1 diabetes usually appears during childhood or adolescence, it can develop in adults. There are always exceptions. You can develop type 2 diabetes at any age, even during childhood. However, type 2 diabetes occurs mostly in middle age and older people. You are more likely to develop type 2 if you are age 45 or older, have a family history of diabetes, or may be overweight. But then again, there are always exceptions, and it's important to remember that. So, how long before it goes away then? What's with all the drama? You'll outgrow it in no time. Okay, I know I read that somewhere. Here we go. Type 1 diabetes is forever. Once a person has type 1, the pancreas can't ever make insulin again. For the rest of your life, you'll need to manage your blood sugar manually as if you are the pancreas. Okay, so is it, um, is it a chronic condition? Yes, a chronic disease... Um, here we go. A chronic disease is a disease that persists for a long time. Chronic diseases generally cannot be prevented by vaccines or cured with medication, nor do they just disappear. Chronic illness usually requires more care and resources to maintain normalization in lifestyle. Can I get it from touching you? Or oh, please don't sneeze on me. I better cover myself. Mm, I need to wash my hands. Diabetes is not a contagious disease. It can't be caught like a cold or flu. <coughs> Excuse me. It does not come in the form of germs. It is an autoimmune disease. Listen up. Immune system disorders cause abnormally low activity or overactivity of the immune system. In cases of immune system overactivity, the body attacks and damages its own tissues. That's what happened to me. My body destroyed my insulin producing beta cells. I actually sent this to my friend the other day. You can't get it from me or any other type 1. I can hug you. I can lick you. I can kiss you. I won't do it though. We can play together or hang out. It's safe, I promise. So do you have high blood sugar or do you have low blood sugar? I have type 1 diabetes and high blood sugar and low blood sugar are just trademarks of the disease. Oh, your heart beats faster, your knees go weak, you start to sweat. Is this love? No, you're probably just hypoglycemic. Let me read that to you. Blood sugar or glucose is the body's primary source of energy. When levels fall too low, the body does not have enough energy to function fully. Low blood glucose, also known as hypoglycemia, comes with many different symptoms and each person's body is different. By educating yourself about the signs of hypoglycemia, you might just be a lifesaver to someone in need and prevent them from having a seizure or slipping into a coma. Hypoglycemia is treated by consuming a carbohydrate-rich food, such as a glucose tablet or juice. It may also be treated with an injection of glucagon if the person is unconscious or unable to swallow. Mm. But why does it mean if you go high? Why does it mean if you go high? Well, it's not literally high as in high, you know, but here we go. It is called hyperglycemia. And it's the opposite of the low that I've just explained. Hyper usually means having too much of something. Like being hyperactive means having too much energy. So hyperglycemia means having too much glucose in your blood. When someone's blood sugar is too high, various symptoms may occur. And it's very important that high blood sugar is treated with care. A person with hyperglycemia urgently needs insulin. Otherwise, it can develop into another serious condition called diabetic ketoacidosis also known as DKA. Just please don't faint while you're with me, okay? That is rude. Well, I'd never... I'd never be able to inject myself. My body doesn't make insulin, therefore I take insulin. I have no other choice, but back to the facts. People who have type 1 diabetes must take insulin as part of their treatment. Because their bodies can't make insulin anymore, they need to take the right amount to keep their blood sugar levels in a healthy range. 
The only way to get insulin into the body now is by injecting with a needle or with the use of an insulin pump. If someone tried to take insulin as a pill, the acids and digestive juices in the stomach and the intestines would break down the medicine and it wouldn't work. How big is the needle and does it hurt? There are different needle sizes and they are not that big, but would you like sticking a piece of metal into your flesh? <laughs> Kidding. It feels like tiny butterfly bites or stabbing yourself with an elephant's eyelash or being nibbled by squirrels. It depends, but all I can say is speed is key and you actually do get used to it. Please don't inject yourself in front of me. I can't stand needles. The liquid you see may not seem like much to most, but to me and millions of others, it is a life-saving drug. Without this hormone, my body wouldn't be able to metabolize the sugars in my blood and I would die of starvation or cellular damage. Insulin is not a cure. It only keeps me alive until a cure is found. And by the way, ouch. I also can't stand needles. So how often do you need to take insulin? Back to the fact book for this one. Each person with type 1 diabetes is different and it depends whether you inject manually or make use of an insulin pump. Type 1 diabetics making use of multiple daily injections instead of the pump can inject anything between 2 to 5 times per day and sometimes even more when corrections are needed. Because I once heard insulin is an addictive drug. I saw that somewhere here, you cannot get addicted to insulin because it's a natural substance that your body needs. Here we go. Insulin is a hormone, so it is safe and natural. It is not a pleasurable drug to take. Sometimes it hurts going in and it produces no response that is pleasurable other than not feeling really bad if you need it. But why did you allow this to happen? There is nothing anyone can do to prevent type 1 diabetes. Well, my friend, you probably don't want to hear this, but you should have taken better care of yourself. It's that simple. I didn't do this to myself. My immune system made a mistake. Well, you probably just ate way too many sweets and junk food as a kid. And that's what gave you type 1 diabetes. Well, I never get it because I only eat salty stuff. And I love this new flavor. Mm. Type 1 is not caused by poor diet or an unhealthy lifestyle. In fact, it isn't caused by anything that you did or didn't do. Type 1 is an autoimmune condition. An autoimmune condition is when your immune system, which normally keeps you safe against disease, attacks itself instead. So no, 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 sugar does not cause type 1 diabetes. It is caused by an internal error. But enough about that. You know if you change your diet, you can actually cure your type 1 diabetes? Allow me to continue. People with type 1 diabetes must have insulin to live. Although a balanced diet is important to people with diabetes, it cannot cure the disease and lifestyle changes will not cure type 1 diabetes. Did you know that exercise can cure your type 1 diabetes? Did you know that yoga can cure your type 1 diabetes? So I searched online and I found a list of all the things that can cure your type 1 diabetes. I wrote them down for you. Ice water, natural remedies, um, essential oils, apple cider vinegar, if you just stopped eating meat, um, if you ate more carrots, regular exercise of course, and then, oh the cinnamon, I forgot to write down the cinnamon. Let me add that for you. And then you can take this list and you can just thank me later, okay? Well, many suggestions may assist with the management of diabetes, but no cure currently exists. Okay, I was actually type 1 just like you, but I have trained my body to no longer need any insulin. What? You know what you should do? Google gastric bypass surgery. I've read all about it and I'm convinced it will cure your diabetes. Oh, just please make it stop. Make it stop. Are you sure you're diabetic? Maybe it's just like an allergic reaction to coffee or something. I don't know. I'm going to say this off the record, just between you and me. I hope you can follow. 
my invisible illness is more real than your imaginary medical expertise. So please, ouch, ouch. Thank you. <laughs> you know if you lose some weight, you can actually cure your type 1 diabetes. <laughs> I wish my ears could unhear that. So, why don't you just get a pancreas transplant? pancreas P. It's not that simple. After a successful pancreas transplant, your new pancreas will make the insulin your body needs so you'll no longer need insulin therapy to treat your type 1 diabetes. But even with the best possible match between you and the donor, your immune system will try to reject the new pancreas. To avoid rejection, you'll need anti-rejection medications to suppress your immune system. You'll likely take these drugs for the rest of your life. But the pancreas is not the problem. The immune system is the root of the problem. Because it attacked the original pancreas, it will most likely do the same to the new pancreas. And chances are that you're only buying yourself a few years without diabetes. But once again, it is different for each and every patient. And back to the fine print, no cure for diabetes currently exists. So do you have a list of all the things that you can't eat? Um, no, do you? A healthy, balanced diet is important for people with type 1 diabetes. Apart from managing blood glucose levels with insulin and carbohydrates, people with type 1 diabetes are encouraged to make healthier food choices that are lower in saturated fat, sugar and salt. You cannot eat this, but I can. Mmm, I see someone's breaking the rules again. You know you should not be eating that. Oh, why do everyone say that? Somebody with diabetes can eat anything that anyone else can. They just need to be far more careful how they eat. The key to eating with diabetes is to eat a variety of health foods from all food groups in the amounts your meal plan outlines. Meals and insulin goes hand in hand. Sorry to intrude, but you should really drink regular soda instead of diet soda because diet soda is so unhealthy. Thanks for the advice, but I prefer diet soda. Listen to this. High levels of sugar in your blood makes it corrosive, turning the life-sustaining soup into a killing battery acid circulating throughout your body. That sounds serious, so I'll stick to the sugar-free, but thanks though. Okay, so I got everyone double thick chocolate donuts. They look amazing, you should see them. But I got you these type 1 treats. They look like this. They were so expensive. And they, they taste like... Mm, they taste yuck. Ew! It's my pancreas that's damaged, not my taste buds. Instant type 1 diabetes. <laughs> Is this real life? Oh, Shay, man, my grand died of that. I miss her so much. Nanny. Really? Long term complications of diabetes develop gradually. The longer you have diabetes and the less controlled your blood sugar, the higher the risk of complications. Well, my friend has diabetes just like you, and he must take pills for it once or twice a day. And if he doesn't take his pills, he'll be dead in like an hour or so. It's horrible. No chronic condition is the same as the next person's. It might be the same disease, but each carrier is different. Look at your fingertips while I look at mine. They have a gazillion holes where I check my blood sugar, but we both have fingers with similar features. Our fingerprints, on the other hand, are completely unique and they can never ever be the same. It is exactly the same with diabetes. Well, I really think my type 2 is worse than your type 1. It is not a competition. I once read that feeling tired is a symptom of type 1 diabetes and lately I've been feeling tired a lot. So, I really think I have it. Can we check my blood sugar? Mm. So my friend's cousin, the cousin's dad, or no, the uncle, oh, the step uncle, he was actually diabetic and he died and he was not even that old, but one day he was just driving, minding his own business and someone crashed into his car and he didn't make it. But I'm pretty sure it was uh, blood sugar or blood pressure. No, he had blood sugar, he was diabetic, just like you. Oh, I know all about it. My sister's cat's diabetic, just like you.
Yes, animals can also get diabetes, but here's the good news. Many of these animals are able to live healthy lives with appropriate vet care and dedicated owner commitment. I know exactly how you feel. I get these headaches like maybe once or twice a month and it's just too much to deal with. It's exactly like your diabetes. It appears and it disappears. It's uncontrollable, it's unpredictable, and some days I just want to be alone. I don't know how to deal with something so intense so regularly because I, I checked my journal and the one entry when I had a headache was like the 3rd of January and then the next entry was on the 22nd of February. So twice in like just over a month <laughs> that's too much to handle having a chronic illness that appears at least every 30 to 60 days I don't know I don't know how to handle this and I'm just so sick and tired of always feeling sick and tired and no one seems to understand so I know exactly what you go through with your diabetes I mean headaches once or twice a month pretty much the same thing and I actually think mine is because of the hay fever I get. I don't know. Really? Listen to this. Diabetes is an invasive and constant disease. It can't be turned off and it does not happen maybe once or twice a month. It cannot be compared to any other disease. But that's the thing about a chronic disease. No one gets it until they get it. Are you? I mean, it can happen to anyone, right? Car crash, cancer, infection, shark bite, frostbite. It can all lead to amputation, but listen to this. Diabetes patients carry a risk of amputations that may be more than 25 times greater than that of people without diabetes. However, with comprehensive management, a large proportion of amputations related to diabetes can be prevented. Well, I heard it can make you go blind. Finally, you're getting your facts right. But what if you have a heart attack? And what if you have one? So, is it really true that diabetes can actually cause dental problems? Yes, diabetes can cause dental problems, but there's quite a list of other possible complications that can also be caused by diabetes. And eventually, diabetes complications may be disabling or even life-threatening. You are such a drama queen. It's not as if it can kill you. Diabetes can kill you, either over a matter of years due to high blood glucose levels affecting your blood circulation and causing serious nerve damage in various parts of your body, or it could happen with a more immediate effect when you experience seriously low blood glucose levels. During a low without help, you could become confused or drowsy or even lose consciousness and possibly die. According to the World Health Organization, in 2016, an estimated 1.6 million deaths were directly caused by diabetes. But look on the bright side, just because it can kill you and can cause complications doesn't mean that it will. You are so lucky to have access to medication because these days it's so easy to manage type 1 diabetes. You can be glad it's not cancer. So, how is it possible that the one moment your sugar is high or maybe it's low and then just a short while after you're fine again, are you, are you making this up? Everything affects diabetes. Carbohydrates, alcohol, fat, caffeine, meal timing, dehydration, medication, exercise or any physical activity, stress, lack of sleep, illness, allergies, too much insulin, too little insulin, menstruation, hormones, everything you eat, food and insulin timing, temperature, sunburn, humidity, social relationships, altitude, general health, self-discipline, hot baths or showers, the list just goes on and on and on. Anything can affect it at any time. So basically you need to think like a pancreas and smile like a puppet while doing it. Easy. I really think you worry too much about your blood sugar. Blood sugar is not about worrying about it too much, it's about controlling it emotionally and physically. One day will feel like a walk in the park and the very next day will be a crazy roller coaster ride. You never know what to expect. It's a roller coaster ride! True. 
Are you sure you should be driving if you have diabetes? Do you really think you can do this job? Success is not what you have, it's who you are. So bring it on. Should you really be traveling? 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 Are you sure you can travel if you have diabetes? It's not like you can unclip it and leave it at home, right? What? But can you do adventurous things? Oh, I'm just glad it's not me. I won't be able to afford it. That is so insensitive. In 2018, insulin was listed as the sixth most expensive liquid in the world and prices keep rising and rising. Human blood came in on number 10. This is my liquid gold and I cannot live without it. There are many cases where type 1 diabetics were forced to do insulin rationing because they couldn't afford this life-saving medication, resulting in deaths which could have been prevented. It's just too complicated for me. Just stop it, you are such a drama queen. But why isn't there a cure for it? I've searched this book from beginning to the end, no answer. So is there a certain symbol or color to represent diabetes? Diabetes is represented by the color blue and the most common sign is a blue circle, significantly symbolizing unity. Did you know November is Diabetes Awareness Month and 40 November is World Diabetes Day? Create awareness or show your love for someone with diabetes by wearing something blue on the 14th of November or every Friday during the month of November. I've heard about hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, diabetic ketoacidosis and I'm even wearing my blue in celebration of you. But there's one little thing you forgot to mention. So I googled it, and this is what I found. That's a wrap from me. Any final thoughts? Everyone, thanks for watching. To my fellow diabetes, I'm proud of you, I need you, and I thank you for being part of my type 1 community. Together, we are stronger, so remember to turn your frustration into education. But I really have to go because I need to check my blood sugar, and I'm really hungry. See you soon. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.